All right, we are moving on to volumes found by rotating uh, a shape over an axis. So there are two ways of doing this, and we're going to look at uh, disks and washers. So this is sort of, think of this as like method one. Um, first, a few words just about volume. Uh, if, we, uh, if we think about a simple shape like a cylinder, you could think of a prism too. Anything where the top and the bottom are the same uh, shape. They're congruent and this is a right cylinder meaning this is directly perpendicularly above the lower surface. The volume is simply thought of as an area. That's our area A and it's moving some distance. In this case we'll call it the height and it's like a piston in a in a um, chamber in a gasoline engine or something like that or a steam engine. So volume is nothing more than an area times a height. Okay, well, uh, if we're going to uh, define uh, certain volumes by rotation, by taking a function, um, in this case, let's do something really simple. Uh, think of like the function we've used before, y equals x squared. We've got, and I'm just showing the right hand side of this because it's an even function, so if we want to look at both sides, we can simply double it or uh, work with the symmetry that way. But if I've got a function like this that's y equals x squared, and I'm going to stop it at some point, maybe it will go out to 2, and we'll say, okay, there it is. And we're cutting it off there, and we're going to spin this around the x-axis and define this volume, this three-dimensional shape like that, by spinning it around this way. There's this oval shape. I'm trying to represent it in three dimensions, so it's spinning like this and we get this volume. I'll shade it a little bit to give it some three-dimensionality. Um, what would be the volume of that? Well, we can use some of the same techniques for finding the area's under curves by just thinking of these as disks that are making up uh, this particular volume. So, the area of any disk is going to be pi r squared. So, area as a function of x is just going to be pi then x squared will give us this cross-sectional area. In this case, these will just be a series of disks, and we can make these disks infinitely thin through our calculus skills. We're going to start at some point A and end at some point B, and we've got some function, and the area is found um, as a function of x, and then we just do that integral from A to B, and that is going to, ascend, in a sense, move the piston down from starting point A to a finish point B. This area is found by putting that function pi x squared in, in for our function A of x. So in this case, uh, if we're going from 0 out here to 2, this example, it's going to be from 0 to 2, pi times x squared squared, because this is our function that's telling us at any point how far we go out x, we're going to have a radius going up to x squared, and then when we square that and integrate it over the, these boundaries, we'll get our actual volume. So in this case, it's the integral from 0 to 2. I can always pull the pi out front. x squared squared is x to the fourth dx. That's very simply then going to be pi times, in this case, 1 fifth x to the fifth evaluated from 0 to 2. When I plug in 2, that's going to give me then 32 over 5 times pi. Okay, so that would be the volume of this particular shape. Well, uh, we can look at a whole variety of shapes like this. Sometimes the shapes are not. Uh, rotated around the x-axis. Uh, sometimes there's more than one curve that's defining it and we're given a reflection point. So the same idea, I'll start off with a fairly simple example. Uh, if we just said uh, let's take a uh, an exponential function like e to the x and it's going like this and let's pick another simple uh, starting and ending point let's say from 0 to 2 and now what we're going to do is we're going to have it um, rotate around, uh, let's say, a, a line right here that's at y equals minus 1. 
That's our axis around which we're rotating this, okay? So essentially what we do then is we're just going to, like before, start at our zero and go up to two, pull the pie out front from the very get-go, and ask ourselves, well, what is that distance that is rotating? So the original function here is y equals e to the x, but we're adding on to it a distance of 1 because it's going from the, uh, the x-axis to uh, y equals minus 1. So it's simply going to be e to the x, then plus 1 squared, and then dx. Okay, So that's the integral. And so um, integrating that now is uh, relatively straightforward. We could FOIL this out and do that. Um, that would be then pi is from 0 to 2, and we, are, we will get e to the 2x plus 2e to the x plus uh, 1, and then dx. When we integrate this, we will get pi times, and the um, integral of e to the 2x is 1 half e to the 2x. The integral of 2e to the x is just 2e to the x, and the integral of 1 then is just x, and we're evaluating that from 0 to 2. So what is that then? That's going to be pi times, in this case when I plug in 2, it's 1 half e to the 4th plus 2 times e squared plus 2 minus when I plug in 0, I'm going to get 1 and 1, so that's 1 half plus 2, 2 and a half, and that will be my answer. So I would just plug that into the calculator and have a result. All right, so uh, looking at one final problem, let's say we're going to do something like the problem we did earlier with, um, or actually let's this is um, quite a bit more difficult problem. I'll try to do this fairly quickly. Let's say it's um, bounded by uh, y equals 1 fourth x squared, and then also y equals 5 minus x squared, all right? And rotated around the x-axis, so about uh, x-axis, OK? This is very similar to a problem in the book, so if we get a quick graph of that. It's going to be a parabola that's quite open. It's going up like this. And that's the origin, 0, 0. And let's see, it goes over something like that. If it goes over 4, it's going to go up about 4. And uh, that gives us just one other target point. And then this is starting at when x is 0, we're at 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, up there at 5, and then it has zeros at um, when x is the square root of 5, so that's around 2 and a quarter down there, so this thing is coming down like that. So, okay, so we're looking at this little area right here, I think is what we're looking at, and uh, yeah, because it's bounded by that and the x-axis, so when it rotates, it's going to make this strange shape like that. So we need to find that point of intersection because we're going to have to break this into two parts. So when are these both going to be equal? That's when 1 fourth x squared equals 5 minus x squared. Clear the fractions is the easiest way to go just to get rid of fractions. Multiply everything by 4. I get x squared equals 20 minus 4x squared. Move the 4x squared over, so I get 5x squared equals 20, and then divide by 5, and then square root, and it's plus or minus 2, but I'm just interested in the plus, so that's the point of intersection. So this is going to be at 2 comma, and when I plug in 2, I get 1. So we're going to have to do this as two separate integrals. It'll be one integral from 0 to 2, and in this case, it's just my first curve revolved, so that's relatively straightforward. 1 fourth x squared, pi is on the outside, this whole thing is squared, dx. And then I'm going to add that to my other integral, 
which is pi again times, and here it's starting at 2 and going to this 0 here, which is when x is radical 5, I get a 0. So I'm going from 2 to radical 5, and then that's my other function, 5 minus x squared squared dx. So I have those two integrals to do, all right? So keeping an eye on the time here, I'm at 10 minutes or so. I'll just quickly get this set up. I probably won't be able to finish it. This first one will be pi then times 0 to 2, and if I square that, I get 1 16th x to the 4th. And when I foil this out, it's pi and it's from 2 to radical 5. That's going to be 25 minus 10x squared plus x to the 4th dx. And then integrating is going to bring that pi. And it's going to be 1 over 16, 16 times 1 fifth x to the 5th and that's evaluated from 0 to 2, plus then this is pi, and this is going to be, oops, that is going to be just a bracket. That's 25x minus 10 over 3x to the 3rd, plus 1 fifth x to the 5th, evaluated from 2 to radical 5, okay? Well, I think in the interest of time, I will not do all that. Um, this will be pi times 1 over 80. When I plug in 2, that's going to make it 32 80ths. And that's a 0 makes that easier. Plus then pi times, uh, that's going to be, when I plug in radical 5, uh, that's going to be 25 radical 5 minus, and when I plug in radical 5 three, and multiply it by itself three times, I'll get 5 for the first one, 5 radical 5, so that'll be 50 radical 5 over 3, and I plug in radical 5 and raise it to the fifth power, I'll get 25 radical 5, one of those will cancel, I'll get plus 5 radical 5, and then, then minus, and when I plug 2 in there, I get 50, plug a 2 in there, I get 80 thirds, and I plug 2 in there, I get 32 fifths, okay, and that's as far as I'm going to go, but that will give you the answer, all right, so we might come back to that as an example later, all right, good luck.